I'm Alani Latang. We start this morning with an update on the Estrada fire in Santa Cruz County. It started Friday as a prescribed burn, but got out of control after it jumped a containment line. Just minutes ago, Cal Fire sent out an update. The fire remains at 35% containment. Taking a look at vaccination numbers both here in our state and around the country right now, nearly 66% of Americans are fully vaccinated. In California, it's nearly 72%. That's more than 24 million people. Mixing and matching of COVID-19 vaccine booster shots is safe and effective. The report finds mixing vaccines created an increase in antibody levels. Two students accused of killing a classmate at Aptos High School made their first court appearance both arraigned in juvenile hall on charges of murder. As for the two students charged with the murder, they're 14 and 17 years old. Prosecutors are not telling us whether they plan to petition the court to have the 17 year old tried as an adult. In northern New Jersey, homes are surrounded by standing water. Streets are impassable by cars. Ida caused catastrophic damage in the northeast, including Maryland, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, New York. At least 49 people have died because of Ida. It's scuba Santa. Oh, wow. <laughs> I didn't know what to expect here. It's actually Santa. They're, they're he was seen at the Newport Aquarium in Kentucky practicing his diving skills. Hey, Santa's got to deliver to those underwater, too. He's preparing for his big night, and he is with his helpers. They're getting ready for need. So I wonder if, like, the beard and the hair gets sort of mangled. <laughs> now to Brazil, where a dog's day at the beach. There's a lot of water today. The shore was taken over by dogs and their owners for the annual Surf Dog Festival. They get to surf with their humans, and I want to and see my, if anyone. Oh, gonna... he's, <laughs> he's like, get me out of here. There. Yeah. <laughs> a Hollywood writer and director lives right here on the Central Coast, and he's bringing important stories of his culture to the stage and the silver screen. Born in Delano, California, in a labor camp, Luis Valdez became interested in theater at six years old. And I told my mom the plays on Friday. She says, I can't help that. We, we, we're being evicted. So uh, I was never in the play. And uh, that left the hunger. A hunger for drama while deeply committed to the United Farm Workers struggle. In 1965, at 25 years old, he joined Cesar Chavez as a volunteer in the Delano Grape Strike. The strike covered a thousand square miles in rural California. There, on the picket lines, Valdez El Teatro Campesino, the farm workers theater, was born. And it was this car caravan that went out in search of scabs in the fields. And then we pulled off by the side of the road whenever we found one. And that's where all of the picketing and, and the, the chanting took place. And that is where our first performances uh, took place, right by the side of the road. And you're doing this all out of the back of a truck? Yes. <laughs> so what do these performances look like exactly out of the back of a truck? Well, Newsweek uh, magazine described us as uh, Buster Keaton, you know, on steroids. It was, <laughs> we were, uh, we used a lot of humor and, and a lot of physical comedy. And so working off of a flatbed truck requires that you be bold, that you be alive, that you be vital. Valdez used theater to inspire social change. El Teatro Campesino showcased Americans from all walks of life. Members of the theater marched from Delano, California, in Kern County, to Sacramento, California, attracting national media attention. It was something that was inevitable. I, I consider what we did as a necessity. And, uh, and so the word got out. All of that led to the evolution of the Teatro Campesino as a theater company, but better yet, it led to the spread of the news that the farm workers were not just docile idiots. We were alive and we were fighting for our human rights for everybody. Valdez experienced violence along the way. One time during a performance, he described being beaten, then arrested by growers who didn't support the UFW. Another time on a picket line, a gun was held to his head. And I just stared at him. And at that moment, uh, the, the thought ran through my head like a flash, am I willing to die for what I'm doing? And, and I decided that it, it was worth it, that I was willing to die for doing theater. In 1971, El Teatro Campesino rooted itself in San Juan Batista, California, just miles from the Salinas Valley. He brought family to the theater, including his son, Kenan Valdez. He brought me in the mix 
and allowed me to have these opportunities to learn from him and other, other people. Valdez went on to write a play about the 1943 Los Angeles Zoot Suit Riots. The riots were violent clashes in which U.S. servicemen, off-duty police, attacked young Latino and Mexican Americans in L.A. Valdez Zoot Suit became the first play written by a Latino on Broadway and went on to become the first Chicano major feature film in 1981. The press has distorted the very meaning of the word zoot suit. All it is for you guys is another way to say Mexican without insulting your allies south of the border. Other successes included his box office hit film La Bamba in 1987. I checked in with Farley's Christmas Wonderland in Midtown Santa Cruz, and they say they're still waiting on decorations they ordered back in 2020. When do you start ordering new products for the next year? Christmas. Okay. Yeah, like uh, this past, on Christmas Day, I ordered a bunch of trees. And some of them I got, and then some of them I haven't seen. Okay. And I'm not going to see them this year. Pat Farley starts shopping for Christmas decorations early for his front yard holiday attraction, Farley's Christmas Wonderland. He placed orders for Christmas trees in December 2020. Some haven't showed up yet. He ordered other decorations in January 2021, but says it took until this November to receive them. He paid nearly $1,200 for that order with free shipping, then got an email in October before the delivery about a price change for shipping. Then it went to $191 and it's like... <laughs> At the same time, Farley was hit with the 25% Ocean Port congestion surcharge of $239.18. I had to laugh. What's this? This is a joke. But so then it started looking around, and that's what's happening. All the fees on everything are going up. Farley says Christmas decor is wiped out of stores, with many suppliers saying they won't restock until 2022. He started his display 15 years ago after a trip to Disneyland on Veterans Day. Farley is a Vietnam War veteran. We walked in, they had the giant tree up, all the buildings had the garland, and I went, I don't want to leave. So after a couple days, it went, well, I'm on a mission. When I go home, I'm going to start my own Disneyland. At first, Farley did it for the family, but after several years, the word got out. People were clawing, climbing over the fence and sticking their kids up, and I'm going, you want to see this? And they're going, yeah. It's a lot of happiness and a lot of warmth here, which is really nice.